All right, welcome everybody to yet another EBFA webinar. I want to thank you guys all for tuning in and um, taking the time out of your busy schedule to uh, support EBFA and get some great education that revolves around barefoot programming and foot fitness. Um, if you're new to EBFA and our webinar series, um, all of the webinars are recorded and they are archived on the EBFA website, which is ebfafitness.com. And uh, all of the future or the upcoming webinars are also listed on there, so you can check out what's coming up in the following months. Um, please do not forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, where we got some great information on upcoming workshops and our latest blogs and evidence-based exercises. So we are going to get started. Tonight is a vibration training. And is it a benefit to barefoot programming? And if it is, specifically, how should you integrate it? And for specifically, uh, what, what type of client or patient is it beneficial for? Um, I found that this topic is quite interesting. Uh, when I was in Asia, the power plate is huge it's in like every single gym and everybody's implementing it, but it was not implemented in a foot specific way or a barefoot way. Um, I thought primarily used for stretching and for massage, which I'm sure felt good, but there are so many more benefits to the vibration platforms and the vibration plates that are out there. Um, probably most common is the power plate. So we're going to go through some of the basics of vibration training. And if you have any questions at the end, we're going to go through the questions that you have. So vibrations, are they good? Are they bad? How does our body respond to them? What happens if there are too many vibrations? And how can you bring this type of training technique into your client's programming to, again, make it more specific and maybe take it to the next level? So vibrations, the good. I'm going to start with the good. So vibrations happen every single time we strike the ground. There are vibrations that are going through our foot, our leg, and our soft tissue. This is how our body senses the texture and the elasticity of the ground that we're on, and it allows our body to then contract and start to absorb these ground reaction forces or these vibrations. So vibrations are good in the sense that they give our body a sense of awareness. Uh, how do we control our center of gravity? How do we maintain balance? And then it helps prepare those muscles to contract to the right degree to then allow us to propel for forward. This first system that we're going to go through is called the haptic perceptual system, which pretty much just means that the bottom of our foot has a bunch of different receptors that allows our foot to discriminate the different elasticity of the surfaces that we're walking on. So we have, maybe you're walking on concrete, and then you step and you start walking on the grass, and then you step on the sand. All of these different surfaces cause a different shift in our center of gravity and require different muscle activation patterns. So the vibrations that go through your foot and through your body when you strike the ground on each of these different surfaces is told or communicated through this haptic perceptual system. The sensitivity of this system is the greatest when your foot is in direct contact with the surface, which means you are barefoot. And a lot of this really has to go in supporting barefoot training and the minimalist movement. So I'm sure that you guys are very pro-minimalist. Um, so we have different mechanoreceptors on the bottom of the foot. We have tactile, skin stretch, texture, and then one of these mechanoceptors is sensitive to vibrations. So again, when we walk, foot contact, heel strike, we get these varying degrees of vibrations running through the body. How do we absorb these vibrations? So these vibrations are transferred through the skin into our plantar muscles, our intrinsic muscles, and to our ankle proprioceptors. Again, the muscle responds to these vibrations and it wants to dissipate it. As much as that information is valuable, you want to dissipate those vibrations as quickly as you can. 
So again, our foot and ankle will adjust to these different surfaces. We will begin to increase knee flexion, joint flexion. Maybe we'll decrease the amount of foot dorsiflexion at heel strike. It's just in case you didn't know that the less dorsiflexion you have at heel strike, the less ground reaction forces you will have going through your body. So if you watch your clients run or walk, look at that degree of ankle joint dorsiflexion at heel strike. It should not be that great. All right. So where else are vibrations good? They're good for proprioception and body sense. They're also good for bone density. So this is where when we have a patient or client who has decreased bone density, we encourage them to do weight-bearing activities. The reason that we have them doing these weight-bearing activities is because these vibrations actually stimulate osteoblastic or building, bone-building response. These vibrations also increase growth hormone, which is interesting, increases growth hormone, which will decrease the resorption of the bone. So it's, it's very important. It has an important role in the prevention of osteoporosis. And a lot of programs around these power plates are focused on osteoporosis. So now we have to get into vibrations, the bad. Not everything can be good. Anything in excess is not good. So if we have increased vibrations that are not dissipated, they are then translated into the tendons, our fascia, into the bone. And this is where you see a lot of the injuries that happen in the foot, whether it's runners or people who play a lot of contact type um, repetitive sports. Achilles tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, stress factors, those are all related to poor dissipation of ground reaction forces or vibrations. It's also interesting that if you have prolonged exposure to vibrations, you actually can get nerve degeneration, neuropathy, and almost an ischemic response to the nerves. So this means that you, you dampen those receptors so much that you lose the sensation in your feet, and it also happens in the hands. Best example is this hand-arm vibration syndrome which I know this is focused on barefoot, but as it relates to vibrations, is somebody who, uh, like a carpenter who is using a power drill, a sander, um, even dental hygienists who use saws, or um, sorry, the drills for the mouth, instruments like that can cause a dampening to these nerves, and then they actually get neuropathy, and they lose the sensation in their hands. So... Similar can happen on the feet. If you have somebody who's standing on a vibrating platform too long, you can actually dampen and it becomes harmful. So is there a role for vibration training for the health and fitness professional? So the way that the vibration training or these power plates have been used or applied in the fitness industry is, again, in osteoporosis prevention. We saw that there's an increase in growth hormone with vibrations. We saw that we can increase osteoblastic activity. Most common one that I see in the fitness industry is in flexibility training. So they'll have a client stand on the platform, try and touch his toes, do a little bit of vibration, and then whoop, they can touch their toes. So you get this increase in flexibility. You can get increased muscle activation. So there's a lot of research in kind of the sports conditioning realm where they get a higher vertical jump after standing on the vibration plate. Another interesting study showed increased blood flow. So if you stand on that vibration platform, you can actually increase your skin flow or the blood flow to the skin, which is very beneficial for certain clients. And it also has a role in balance and stability. A lot of studies are done with seniors in the aging population and the role that the vibration platforms can have with them. So as far as the vibration, vibration training and barefoot programming is, is it beneficial? How can we integrate it? And what type of clients is it most appropriate for? So when we look at vibration training, we need to consider, should we be doing low frequency or high frequency? Should we do it in people who have impaired or dysfunctional nerve function? Or can we still do it in our healthy clients? And then we want to look at specific applications. Is it primarily just for maintaining balance? Or can we actually strengthen the muscles of the foot 
by integrating these vibration platforms. And are these benefits theory or evidence-based? So if we look at theory or anecdotal, like I, I think it works, it, it makes sense like it would work, or is there sound research that's backing this vibration training? Unfortunately, there are a lot of conflicting data. So where most of the conflicts and uh, more this theory-based lies is when vibration training was done in healthy subjects. So if you have great nerve function, you have no um, decreased sensation on the bottom of the foot, you have great stability, and you do the vibration training, is there an added benefit? A lot of the research showed no. So then another study did higher frequency. There's a certain frequency that your mechanoreceptors that are specific to vibration responds to. If you go higher than that frequency, can you maybe increase the sensitivity of these receptors? Unfortunately, the studies also showed that there was no benefit. And then the last one is prolonged exposure to the vibration threshold. So if I stand on it longer, do I get a better benefit than if I do short little bouts? And unfortunately, the prolonged exposure, again, dulled out the receptors. So how can we use this to create more effective and specific vibration training programs? So these three is where I like the vibration platforms and vibration training. First one is ankle instability. Second one is strengthening the intrinsics in the bottom of the foot. And then the third one is a general improvement in balance. So the first one that we're going to do is ankle instability. So there was a 2012 study that showed that subjects who had ankle instability so they, they have a history of an ankle sprain, and now they feel like their ankle keeps giving away. They have frequent ankle sprains. They have decreased sensation on the bottom of the foot. And what was interesting is that this decreased sensation on the bottom of the foot was very specific to the mechanoreceptors that detected vibrations. Remember that if your body cannot detect these vibrations at heel strike, you're going to have an impaired sense of your center of gravity, where's your foot, how hard are you striking the ground, okay, so there was that association in those subjects with ankle instability. So barefoot training is key technique for specifically increasing the sensitivity on the bottom of the foot. If we can integrate the vibration training with the barefoot training with your clients who have ankle instability, perhaps we can get better results. Why you do not want to do the vibration training in those who have a history of ankle instability with your shoes is because that's going to dampen the vibrations. So then this technique becomes much less effective. Second technique or application that I love the vibration training is in the dissipation of ground reaction forces. So we're specifically training or integrating this technique for those clients who need enhanced dissipation of ground reaction forces. This could be your runner. This could be your client with a history of plantar fasciitis. This could be your client who has a history of stress fractures. Somebody who either needs better dissipation of ground reaction forces because of their sport, or somebody who has a history of an injury showing that they have poor ability or impaired ability to dissipate those ground reaction forces. So our body responds to vibration by dampening them. The way that we dampen these vibrations is by contracting our muscles. As much as we like vibrations, we want to get away or decrease those vibrations by contracting the muscles. Since these vibrations start in the foot, that means the muscle contractions start in the foot as well, and it would be specific to the intrinsic muscles in the bottom of your foot. So vibration training as a technique to strengthen your intrinsics, perhaps that is. Unfortunately, there's no study doing this. All of the studies have looked at larger muscles, the quads, the hamstrings, the glutes, what happens when you stand on a vibration platform and they stimulate these larger muscles. I, I would bet that they are also stimulating the intrinsic muscles in the bottom of the foot. The stronger the intrinsic muscles in the bottom of the foot, 
the greater or the more capable you will be at dissipating ground reaction forces, and they have an effect on foot posture, so you may be able to get a little increase in the arch. Last one that I like to apply vibration training is for the general improvement of balance. So this could be an age-related nerve degeneration. This could be in your diabetic population. There's actually a lot of studies of vibration training in the diabetic population. Why I like it in these two groups is because one, we're stimulating the nerves, but two, if we go back to the first benefits of vibration training, there was one that said we get an increase in skin blood flow. The nerves, that give us this proprioceptive awareness and, and innervate the mechanoceptors are in your skin. So it's so important to increase the blood flow to your skin for the health of the nerves. It's called microvascular circulation. So vibration training can increase your microvascular circulation to the skin and to the small nerves that supply the skin. Very important in both of these populations aging population and diabetics. Other one related to improved balance is we get this improved control of center of gravity. Everybody can benefit from this. Unfortunately, how the nervous system works is that if you do not train it, you lose it. If you do not use it, you lose it. Holds so true for the nervous system. So we have to stimulate these mechanoreceptors and challenge it to maintain that sensitivity. If you have somebody who's new to barefoot training, this would be a great way to stimulate the bottom of the foot and then get them off of the platform and finish doing more of your barefoot training techniques. So, how can you use the vibration training platform correctly and most effectively? My recommendations when I speak to physical therapy offices and send patients to get this done is two to three times a week. All the vibration training should be barefoot. Remember that the more, the closer contact that the skin on the bottom of the foot has with the sensory input, here would be the vibration plate, the more sensitive it would be. So you want to take off the shoes. You do not want to exceed 60 seconds per stimulus. I do all and I recommend all the vibration training to be on one foot. And you will do 60 seconds on one foot, switch to the other foot, go back to the right, switch to the left, that you're going back and forth. The reason that you do not want to go more than 60 seconds is because you want to stimulate the nervous system, but you do not want to fatigue the nervous system. The 60 second rule holds true for perturbation training as well. So again, we're switching right, left, right, left, Remember, we do not want prolonged exposure because this can dull the mechanoceptors. Remember the carpenter with the, with the sander. We want to avoid that. We want it to be at lower frequencies. So again, lower frequencies, high frequency. Again, you do not get as great of a response. Best platforms are those that oscillate. So an oscillating means that it would have a sinusoidal rhythm. It would go from one side of the platform back to the other side. Again, alternating sides. That creates the best response. And then, again, you want to integrate your balance and single leg exercises because, again, where we use the bottom of the foot and kind of that, that shift in center of gravity is when we're on one foot. So it's the most functional. So upcoming workshops, again, we always have our barefoot training specialist. If you guys have any questions as it relates to vibration training and the application of vibration platforms into your barefoot programming, again, the greatest success that I've seen this in is those with ankle instability want to stimulate the bottom of the foot. And secondly is... Those that need intrinsic strength, who have a history of plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, or stress fracture, that vibration platform is perfect to start increasing that intrinsic strength. Just make sure their stress fracture is healed. And then the last one is in age-related and diabetics, because one, we want to challenge those nerves, and then two, we want to get that increased 
skin blood flow, because again, that microvascular circulation supplies the skin and it supplies those small nerves that supply the mechanoceptors. So again, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Um, in the November webinar, we're going to have a special guest from Hong Kong, which I'm very excited. Um, he's a Pilates instructor in Hong Kong, and I met him when I was there in July, and he's going to do a webinar on Pilates programming for the barefoot runner. So it's going to be very focused on pelvic floor stability and how that affects foot strike, heel strike, and the dissipation of ground reaction forces. All right, so question, how many receptions or repetitions, I'm guessing, per foot session? The way that I integrate the barefoot vibration training is, is part of the warm-up. And I use all barefoot training as part of the warm-up because it is a form of neuromuscular training. So I recommend to the physical therapist to do five minutes of barefoot vibration training for each session, each session. And that's two to three times a week. So five minutes, integrate it in there, warm up the foot, integrate some single leg exercises, and you do that for those three categories, and you should see great success. So the ideal hurts. You want a low velocity. So the way that the power plate works is there's three settings. So there's a, a lower vibration, and then a medium and a high, you want to stick to the lower vibrations and it's time so that it's 30 seconds, 60 seconds, or I believe 90 seconds. So you want to focus on the lower velocity and the shorter period. So not, not exceeding the 60 seconds. Um, where you're getting the higher hertz, the, the power plate doesn't go to the the hertz that was exceeding. The ones in the studies that it was not beneficial was actually around like 250 hertz, which is really high. Um, so most of the hertz that you'll see is around 30 hertz. Um, but again, the power plate is not going to give you a specific that's at that hertz. It's just going to have like a low, medium, high. So I would stay with the lower. Okay, any other questions? Um, again, all of the webinars are archived. All right, is barefoot training on a vibration platform safe for a person with vertigo? Vertigo is very tricky. <laughs> um, it's not that it's not safe. You just have to um, listen to the client and make sure that they're not having symptoms. And that's where you also want to stick to the lower hertz. Um, the higher hertz where you're, you're trying to stimulate the bone, that requires a higher hertz. If you want to actually increase the muscle contractions, so the muscle contraction of the quads, um, that's at a higher hertz. Remember that we're training the proprioceptive and more the nervous system than increasing bone density, trying to create this growth hormone response. So if the, the client with the vertigo and you keep it to the lower hertz, I'm sure that they would be able to tolerate it. And you do want to do your barefoot balance exercises on that platform as well. They can step off, they can step on, they can do single leg squats. A lot of the barefoot exercises that translate to then a functional, um, functional mechanism or activity of daily living. So um, it's actually really interesting where the vibration, uh, not platforms, but where vibrations first started was when people were bed bound or hospital bound and they started getting the sarcopenia and muscle wasting. They would expose them to the high vibrations and their muscles would actually contract and they would get a release of creatine kinase, which showed that the muscles were contracting and that they were actually utilizing these, these muscles. So they were getting a stimulus. Um, that's where they were first used. And then they saw a benefit also to the bones, um, but you need a prolonged exposure. Again, for the nervous system, you're doing it a little bit differently. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of um, research in vibration training and barefoot 
I think it'd be very interesting to see the benefit, especially to something like the intrinsic muscles and can it change the shape and, you know, do you have an increased stability in a diabetic or age-related? So it's, it's an area that was hot and then it kind of fell out of wayside, but I'm hoping that it comes back, especially with this resurgence of barefoot training. So um, you're welcome, Neff. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much. Again, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. If you do not get the EBFA newsletter, make sure you sign up because there's some great exercises and blog articles that we show in there. Um, and I encourage you, again, to check us out. If you have not had a, or attended a barefoot training workshop, I encourage you to attend that as well. Thank you guys so much. If you want a copy of this PowerPoint, please email me at education at ebfafitness.com. Again, education at ebfafitness.com. Thank you guys so much and have